Hey everyone, what is going on? I'm back with another video and today I've got another product sent to me to check out, this time from Extreme Rate. Extreme Rate was kind enough to send me one of their products to check out and install it. They specialize in controller shells. For example, you have a regular Switch Pro controller. Maybe you wanna change out this color scheme? You can do that with one of their products. Today, I'm gonna take the Pro Controller shell that they sent me, testing it out, and putting it on this my personal Nintendo Switch Pro Controller. So here's the box that they sent me. Nothing too fancy, right? It's a little beat up, but we're not necessarily looking at this product. This is the one we're going for. This is their actual case itself, or the shell itself. Sorry, open this up, take it all out. So I chose the SNES version because I wanted to get a full painted version of it and not just a simple um, plastic shell exchange. So this one is a fully painted Pro Controller. If you take a look there. And it comes with all the screws here in this bag, as well as two screwdrivers. And it comes with a bunch of different buttons in two different color schemes. There's not really any instructions on it. There's a one year warranty on it if something were to happen to it, pretty cool. So as you can see here, this is the actual shell, which comes in four different parts. The front plate, the back plate, the left grip, and the right grip. And it looks pretty simple to put on because you've got the front plate, back plate, left grip, and the right grip. Let's take the screwdriver and start by unscrewing everything. There's not really any instructions on it, which is kind of a shame, but I feel like this should be simple enough. So I'm gonna start by finding a screw here and a screw over here and just going for it. And then once I've unscrewed that, you just simply slide off the grip and then you do the same thing to the other side. And then you pull this one off. So then after removing those, you then have four screws on the back. One, two, three, four. And you just remove those with the screwdriver included. And you unscrew the next two. After you unscrew the last one, the back plate, let's see, should just come off. It kind of just pulls off here very slowly and carefully. I don't want to break anything. And it just slides off with a little bit of pressure. Not too much though. So now all we have to do now is unscrew the front plate, which is looks like three screws. The good thing about the screwdrivers that they include is that they are magnetic as well. So it's less likely that you'll lose these very small screws. I've now successfully unscrewed the front plate. Now it's time to remove it. So let's figure out how to do this very, very slowly. Sorry, there's actually two more screws right above the battery. So we'll here and here. All right, next you'll want to remove the battery. So you just kind of grab it with your nail here, pull this out, which will remove the battery from the controller and set that aside. Next, you wanna kind of finesse the shell off of the back plate very slowly. So you kind of just finesse it off. It'll take a while, but it's a very slow process here. And then eventually it does come off very, very slowly. So what you're gonna do next is take tweezers and on this little black section here where the ribbon cable is at, you're gonna flip it upwards. So it's almost like on a spring. So you just, it requires no force. Don't use much force at all when flicking this black piece to release the ribbon cable. If you use too much force, you might break it. So be very careful with that. And now the two pieces are now separated. So after unscrewing and removing the back section of the controller, now we're left with the front. So now we're gonna unscrew here. So now with that done, you're gonna take this entire back section off, including the circuit board, very carefully. So now after we've removed the circuit board and shoulder buttons, we'll set this aside and then we'll work on the buttons here for this plate. The neat thing about this is that you get to choose exactly what color style you want because there's two different sets. You have ABXY in light purple and you have ABXY in dark purple. So then you just choose whatever color option you want and then you line it up. And when it's set up, that's what the front should look like. Everything kind of fits into place very well. Then you take the rubber stops from here and just transfer them over onto this other shell. Easy, done there. And then you can move the home buttons over and then you can choose whatever directional pad color you want. If you want a dark purple 
or if you want it light purple, it's up to you. So I'm gonna choose the dark purple here. And then now I'm gonna do the uh, home buttons and the plus, minus, and the capture buttons. So you take off the rubber here. And because they didn't include additional buttons for these ones, I'm going to just take the ones that I have. Just take tweezers and just slide in there. Put the rubber over it afterwards. This one, you have to pop out. So now after I put in all of the buttons and I screwed it back in, I can now take the back half of the shell and I don't need to do much here. I just need to put it, slide this in here and make sure that I'm able to reattach the ribbon cable. So that took me a little bit of time to reconnect that cable. And now it's the final parts, which are reattach these screws and then just tighten them finger tight. I don't think it needs to be extremely tight because you don't want to break the controller. Then you take the battery, replace it back in, and this clips into place, and then you screw it back in. So I'm just lightly screwing each of these silver screws in. Each of the four silver screws back goes back into this part of the shell onto the back plate. Screw them in finger tight again. Again, they shouldn't be extremely tight because you don't want to break the shell. You just want it tight enough to be able to close these gaps here. And as you screw it in, you'll notice that the gap gets tighter. There, now it's nice and tight right here. Just make sure, double check your work. Screw in, tighten to make sure there's less gaps everywhere. This part though, screwing it in and tightening it is not difficult. Difficult part, I'd say, was the ribbon cable. And then with that attached, good news is the last part is super simple. You slide on each of the ends here, and then all you have to do is just screw in the last screws. That's it. So you take the last two of your remaining screws, place it in, and you just screw in one. So I realized I might have messed something up and the ribbon cable might not be properly attached. So I have to go back in and make sure to reattach the ribbon cable, so I'm gonna go do that now. Okay, so after a lot of figuring it out without really any instructions, I had to turn to YouTube to figure out how to do it, but it honestly wasn't that difficult. It's just a bunch of screws and one ribbon cable. I'd say the most tricky part about it all is the ribbon cable, but this is what the Switch Pro controller looks like before, and this is what it looks like after. the front plates are different, the grips are different, the back plate is different, except for the top. That's the only thing that's not different, as well as the top buttons, shoulder buttons, and the sticks, home button, the capture button, and the plus minus buttons are not different at all. But it looks fantastic. The only thing that I wish was different is if they maybe included a lighter gray D-pad, much in the style of the original SNES, and lighter gray buttons here. The control sticks, I can kind of live with being black. It'd be nice if it was also gray. I, I'm okay with the, the top section of it being all black up here because it's just one giant bar. But at least the front, I would like to look more like the original. But all in all, this looks fantastic. And you're able to customize it, like I said, with the uh, lighter D-pad or the different color ABXY buttons. But I just chose a classic style with the dark purple D-pad. As for the feel, it's plastic with almost like this painted on texture on it. Um, it feels really nice. But my worry is what happens when it gets scratched? If it gets scratched, will it start to look black underneath? But that's gonna be something that we just find out through regular wear and tear. Okay, so after playing with the controller for a little bit, I realized that the D-pad actually wobbles a little bit. If you can see it, it seems like it wobbles quite a lot actually. The D-pad on the regular Switch controller shell also wobbles. A dark button on a dark background, you can't really see the shadow between the D-pad and the shell itself. Whereas this one, you can kind of see it a little bit more because it's light surrounding purple. So you might be able to see a little bit more, which makes it seem more apparent, but both controllers actually do have 
D-pad wobble on it. But honestly, I don't think that the D-pad wiggle is that big of a deal. Anyway, that's just my thoughts from, I guess, future Sean. So back to you, past Sean. And because of how easy it is to set up, maybe you don't wanna use these grips here. You could honestly just switch these grips back on so that way the center is gray and the grips that you're holding onto is the switches rubberized gray grips. It all just depends on what you want to do with your Nintendo Switch Pro Controller. They have so many different color options, even the buttons that they include in the bag, they allow you to customize it a little bit. All in all, I can say this looks really good. And after the trouble with the ribbon cable, I actually got it up and running again. So it's just a matter of getting that ribbon cable in properly and then closing the uh, closing the, the, <laughs> the little thing onto it. I'd actually really love to be able to do a proper tutorial on how to do this with broken down instructions on how to unscrew things and stuff like that. Maybe I'll do that in an upcoming video. We'll see. It feels like a new controller. It's obviously not a new controller. It's the same old controller. So it's still got all the same components inside. It's just got a facelift and now it looks completely different than let's say you bring these to a party, right? And everybody's got the same pro control. Well, yours now stands out from the rest. So for about $30, I believe, you can completely change the way your Nintendo Switch Pro controller looks. I mean, look at that. This is the SNES version. They have, I think, like the atomic purple of the classic Nintendo 64 style. They have a bunch of different color options for you to choose and it comes with various different buttons. Okay, so I can't get over how nice it looks. Like, I'm still just staring at it constantly. I've cut out plenty of takes where I'm just looking at it, but I can guarantee I've looked at it a pretty long time and I'm pretty happy with this. Hey, uh, me again, don't know why I didn't talk about this during the actual video, but I realized that the buttons included, I mean, this isn't an issue, but these are recessed buttons here, or at least the lettering is recessed. Whereas on the actual Switch Pro Controller, it's more of a printed on ABXY, whereas this one is like almost carved into the controller. Same with the D-pad, carved in, and then more of a print on it. Again, don't know how important that information is for you, but uh, I figured I should let you guys know. Anyway, what do you guys think of the Extreme Rate Nintendo Switch Pro Controller shell? Do you guys like it? Do you guys not like it? Let me know down in the comments below. Like the video if you liked it, subscribe if you haven't. Thanks to all my patrons, and I'll see you guys in the next video.